This is a quick video on how you can add a staggered animation with Framer Motion by scrolling it into view only once. What we want to do here is get that cool uh, staggered animation, but only once. So only the first time you scroll past it. So let me refresh here. Now when I scroll down, we have that cool staggered animation. Very easy to do with, with uh, Framer Motion. So we just have to convert this li into motion.li. Whoops, motion.li. And let's also make sure the closing tag is correct. We need to import motion. And I don't see it here. Motion config is something else. So we need to import it manually. And actually, Copilot helps me out here. Okay, so um, if you remember, we've used initial and animate before. So we've said initial is something, right? And then animate. Now we can write that in line here, but often in this case, in this scenario, you're also going to extract it somewhere else. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna create a new uh, variable here. We're gonna, we're gonna call it fade in animation variance. So you can also have so-called variance in frame or motion. And it's basically gonna be very similar. So we're gonna say initial is gonna be, well, uh, opacity zero indeed. So they should all, let's take one more look. They should all sort of fade in from, from below and um, in terms of opacity as well as in terms of their position, they should start off a bit lower, right? So opacity should be zero and Y along the Y axis, they should start 100 pixels lower initially, right? And then the animation animate will put the opacity at one and Y at zero, right? We, we're not gonna say transition, Okay, so then we have this. So let's copy the name, fade in animation. And actually this is wrong. It should be animation variants, not animations. So make sure you have the same name, fade in animation variants. So then we can go to this motion li component and we can say variants. That's gonna be those, uh, that object. So what we're gonna say here is now we're gonna say, now we can say initial, and instead of doing it in line here, we can just refer to the object keys here. So we have initial and animate. So obviously for the initial prop, we actually do want uh, initial. That needs to be a string. And then before we set animate, and this will animate it, if we do it like this, it will animate it as soon as we load the page. We don't want that. It should be animated when we actually scroll it into the view. And we can also very easily do that with, with uh, Framer Motion. All we have to do is say while in view is animate right so this should happen this animate should happen when it gets into the view and we also don't we don't want to have it happen every time because i always think it looks a bit cheesy if you do it if you also have it when you scroll up so we only want to do it once so what we can also say is viewport is and then here an object we can say once true okay so let's see what we get if we do this i'm gonna refresh here a little bit higher and now when i scroll down you can see it's not exactly what we want. So if I refresh again, you can see it's, it, it is the type of animation that we want, but not, um, not in the order that we want it. So they should all come one after another, right? So in the example, they all come one after another. And here they are all basically going at the same time, right? So what we need to do is for each one of these LIs, because we're mapping over all of them, every one, every one of these should get a delay. That's a little bit more than the previous one. Now it becomes a more advanced uh, frame or motion situation. How can we make sure that this LI, because what we can add here is basically a transition. So anim for in animate here, we can actually also add transition. So it's in the animate object. And what we can do here is we can add a delay, right? Of let's say 0 0.05, but now they will all get that delay, right? So we, how can we make sure that each LI gets an additional 0.05 seconds of delay. That's what we want. So we can actually pass uh, something into this uh, object here. So here, if you go here, if you if you set custom here, you can pass a value. And here it's gonna be the index. Right? So actually we're gonna use the index here because as, as the index goes up, we actually want more delay. So the index makes sense to use here. So we're gonna pass index and then we can access that here. So the animate, instead of just have, instead of this being an object, we can make this a function now that returns an object, right? You can write it like this in JavaScript. So very quickly, you can, um, if you write an object like this, you can just wrap this in parentheses and now you don't have to write the return keyword, right? So if you don't have parentheses, this won't work, right? So now 
it's like the opening of of the function body right so then you have to write return uh like this right so you can do both you can do this or a bit faster to write is instead of using the return keyword you just use parentheses here and then we also have to remove another one here yeah okay so we have that custom index and we get that here as an as an input so we can call that index and typescript wants to know what kind of value that's going to be so we can say it's going to be a number and then we can just use that here so this delay is going to be 0 0.05 let's do times the index so if it's a, if the li is for example index 20 it's going to be 0 0.05 times 20 which is going to be a, a bigger delay than an index of 2 right it's going to be 0 0.05 times 2 so you're going to have a staggered like um, uh, animation so if we save here and now let's see what we get i'm going to refresh here and now we have a very cool animation here for the skill section all right let's also check if it works if i scroll down so i'm going to refresh here and now i'm going to scroll down to the skill section and we get a super cool intro animation as we scroll down for this section as well so well done if you made it all the way here by the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.